crispy, flavorful golden fries or a sad, soggy mess. Your air fryer can make both, so make sure you do it right. When it comes to cooking literally anything, the simple act of preheating your air fryer can transform you from a rookie with the recipe to a professional home chef. Some air fryers, like the Philips air fryer, don't call for preheating. However, you might still consider doing it, especially if your food always looks like a soggy, disappointing mess. Imagine Cinderella transforming from a lowly servant to a princess with the mere flick of a magic wand. Well, that's how magical preheating your air fryer can be too. Preposterous! No, seriously, preheating your device will prepare your fries much quicker, and they will have that restaurant-quality crisp and crunch. Using an air fryer is similar to using an oven and that you're going to want to make sure you take the time to preheat. Some recipes might not demand that you preheat, but you're better off preheating the air fryer anyway. Some foods, like pastries and thick raw meat, are better without preheating, though. However, we strongly recommend you preheat your air fryer before cooking fries, especially if you're looking for that audible crunch when you bite into one of those golden sticks of salty goodness. But that's really hard! Now, now, don't fret. Preheating your device isn't rocket science. Read your air fryer manual to learn exactly how to preheat your device. Some models come equipped with a preheat function. If your air fryer does not have this feature, simply set the temperature at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes, and you're golden. Cooking spray is such a neat and handy kitchen tool, so why not use it in your air fryer and save yourself from the hassle of scraping and washing, right? Wrong. While to air is human, the mistake of using a cooking spray in an air fryer is a disaster of epic proportions. And here's why. You can use cooking oils in an air fryer with no problem. However, cooking sprays tend to damage the surface of the air fryer basket. These baskets have a non-stick coating that tends to chip away when they come into contact with harsh chemicals. Most aerosol sprays like PAM have an ingredient called lecithin a surfactant with emulsifying properties. As the substance comes into contact with Teflon, the result is a stubborn, sticky buildup that eventually damages the surface of the basket, ruining the quality of your food. Now, imagine your fries are simmering in the heat, turning from pale yellow to a gorgeous golden brown, just how you like it. But when you pull out the drawer, you find dark bits of Teflon sticking to your fries. So the bottom line is if you don't want to render your fries inedible, stop using store-bought cooking sprays. If you prefer the ease of using a cooking spray, you can simply use an oil sprayer. Warning, skipping this step can result in a culinary disaster. Do you want sad, soggy fries devoid of flavor? No, anything but that. Didn't think so. Often, folks zip right on past soaking the potatoes and wonder what went wrong. Crying over that messy clump of fries certainly won't fix your problem. But here's a little advice that can make a big difference the next time you cook your fries in the air fryer. Make sure that before you do anything, whip out a bowl of cold water. Once you've cut up your fries to the desired length, put them in the bowl. You can even add a few cubes of ice to it. And here's a bonus tip for you. Using chilled salt water will give you even more exceptional results. You see, soaking the potatoes in cold water releases starch and gives your fries a nice crispy layer when cooked. You should let the fries soak for about an hour to get that coveted crunchy texture. You'll eventually see the water becoming cloudy and murky. That cloudiness is the unwanted starch. Before tossing your soaked fries into the air fryer, rinse them properly and pat them dry with a towel to soak up all the excess moisture. To blanch or not to blanch? That is never the question, because to achieve french fry perfection, you always need to blanch your potatoes. This is especially true if you want your comfort food to be evenly cooked and your burger companion to have that incredibly textured layer of crunch. The reason why this step is so crucial is that blanching softens the starch on the surface of the potatoes and helps to release their moisture, both of which will lead to a crispier final result. Blanching your potatoes is easy. Simply peel and cut your potatoes while the water boils, add salt to it, and place the potatoes sticks in the boiling water. Let it simmer for around four minutes, remove them from the water, and make sure to pat them dry. The magic at work here is that blanching removes all the moisture from the potatoes, and once you give them an excellent cold water soak, the cells in the potato shrink up, allowing them to crisp up more quickly. It's Air Frying 101. You should never overcrowd your air fryer basket with food. Since air fryers act like convection ovens, the air circulates around the food. This is precisely why the food cooks so quickly. So if you overcrowd your air fryer basket, the air won't circulate properly, and this will result in an inconsistent fry texture. Because the air doesn't have enough space to flow around the fries evenly, the fries in the middle of the basket will only get steamed, making them soggy rather than crisp, and some might not even be cooked at all. As tempting as it might be to stuff as many fries as possible in the air fryer to speed up the process, it's a bad idea. Ensure only enough fries are in the basket to leave ample room for air circulation. This means you might have to cook your fries in batches or buy a bigger air fryer. 
While most folks know air frying is a far healthier option, they might overlook the fact that it still consumes oil. Sure, the amount of oil used, as opposed to pan frying, is way less, but greasing your air fryer basket is a must. Otherwise, the fries won't achieve the ideal texture you're looking for. Rather, they will turn out relatively dry or soggy. It's recommended to use oils with a higher smoke point, including grapeseed, avocado, and olive oil. Toss a tablespoon of oil with your fries with salt and some seasoning. You will also need to grease the bottom of the air fryer basket so the fries don't stick to it. You'll want to grease the basket by rubbing or spraying oil on the grates to ensure the food won't stick. Next, place the fries side by side. And remember not to stack them. Shake it till you make it. Well, make a beautiful pile of golden, crispy fries, that is. Shaking the air fryer basket is crucial, especially if you're working with smaller foods like french fries, chicken wings, or chopped vegetables. Now, you might be worried that removing the basket will cause the heat to escape. And yes, it will. Some air fryers pause once you remove the basket. But do not panic. Once you place the basket back in, the air fryer should kick back on and start cooking at the same temperature again. While it's not exactly the same as giving the basket a good jostle, you can always use a pair of tongs to flip your fries. This ensures your fries are evenly cooked from all sides, rather than letting them crisp up unevenly. For an effective way to shake things up in the air fryer, take the handle, pull out the basket, and shake it. When making fries, one good shake should be enough. You may be just making fries with any kind of potato you have on hand, but it turns out there are certain types of potatoes that are the best of the best for making french fries. And not just any fries, super duper crispy, nostalgia-inducing salty fries. To make these fries, you must use russet potatoes, particularly the russet Burbank kind. These potatoes are higher in starch and low in moisture content, making them the perfect ingredient to make heaven on a plate. However, you can also use Yukon Gold and Maris Piper potatoes. A russet potato is recognizable by its characteristics oblong shape, brown skin, and starchy white insides that fluff up nicely when fried. The skin on a russet potato is also harder than that of a regular potato, making it perfect for making fries with skin intact. So your crunch will be intensified. Apart from choosing russets, you should get a large size spud, since they are easy to cut and make for a large finger size fry. Russets cook up beautifully in the air fryer and more quickly than other potatoes too. Sprinkling salt over a steaming plate of freshly made fries seems like the right thing to do. You've likely been doing this for as long as you've been making fries, and nothing terrible has happened… yet. So why is it a mistake if you're making fries in an air fryer? Adding salt to your food after they've been deep fried is a must. But for oven baked or air fried fries, it's another story entirely. What you need to do instead is coat the raw fries in olive oil and toss them. Then add salt and any other seasonings and toss them once again for good measure. Of course, you can tweak the seasoning blend as per your taste. If you've let the skin on for your russet potatoes, you'll find that the steam and oil will work wonders in helping the fries to absorb the salt and any other flavors. We suggest sprinkling seasoning on fries when loading them in the air fryer and then putting the basket in the air fryer to crisp them up. It's best to use fine salt or ground salt rather than large coarse salt flakes. This will allow the salt flavor to be fully absorbed by the potato, enhancing the taste. As the fries simmer in the heat, the oil will start to cook up the salt, melting right into the surface. We have all seen our mothers grab a bunch of paper towels and lay them on a tray when making fries. The steaming hot fries with oil dripping from the strainer spoon are gently tossed onto the prepared tray so that the paper towel can absorb the excess oil. And more than likely, you've probably been doing this too. And why wouldn't you? No one wants to be eating oil-laden fries, right? But what if we were to tell you that there's another, better way to do this? Yep, we're here to tell you that a cooling rack gets the job done without making a mess. You'll want to lay a tinfoil sheet on the counter and place the cooling rack above it, so the oil spill is easily cleaned up. Awesome, right? What's more is that we found that paper towels often stick to the fries, with the oil working like glue in this case. As the fries start to cool down, the paper gets stuck, rendering them inedible and gross. No one wants to eat paper. We suggest putting fried items fresh from the air fryer onto the cooling rack so the air can hit them from all sides, even under the fries, to crisp them up nicely and thoroughly. Paper towels, on the other hand, turn fries soggy and limp, which are two words no one wants associated with their french fries. French fries have long been considered to be a kind of Jekyll and Hyde food. They are absolutely delicious when they're fresh out of the fryer. But after they've cooled off a bit, they lose quite a bit of their appeal and any leftover French fries tend to be notoriously difficult to revive. But wait, don't abandon those fries on the plate! While the microwave is definitely not the way to go if you want your fries to be edible the day after, there are several methods of reheating leftover fries that will render them crunchy and delicious once more. The french fries are pretty good. French fried potatoes? Yep, french fries. 
One experience with microwave-warmed day-old fries is all you need to learn that it turns fries into a soggy mess. If you've ever wondered why, there are a few reasons. For one thing, a microwave heats from the inside out, so your fries won't get crispy without being overcooked. For another, the heat can be uneven, so some fries may burn while others stay limp. And if you're reheating them in any kind of container, that container will trap the moisture inside and basically steam cook your fries. It might not be as simple as the microwave, but the best way to reheat fries involves frying them a second time. You do not need a deep fryer similar to the one that birthed your fries in the first place, and in fact, you wouldn't want to re-immerse them in such a huge quantity of oil anyway. What you are going to need, however, is a large skillet and just a bit of oil, around two teaspoons for every cup of fries. First, you'll heat the skillet over medium heat, then you add the oil and heat it until it's shimmering. Add a single layer of fries and cook them for one minute before flipping them with a spatula. Let them fry for about 30 seconds longer, then salt them and eat them while they're hot. Be sure not to overcrowd the pan with fries, though. If you're reheating a lot of fries, do so in small batches. If you have too many fries and too small a pan, they may end up steamed instead of sautéed, and won't be much better than if you'd use the microwave after all. If you're reheating a large amount of fries, using your oven will also work quite well. However, in order to ensure crispness, it's very important that you actually take the time to preheat the oven to 450 degrees, and that you also use a sturdy baking sheet. A skillet will also work, as long as all your fries fit in without crowding. You can oil your baking sheet, although it's not entirely necessary that you do so. No matter what, you should put the sheet or pan in the oven without fries while the oven is doing its preheating. Once it's reached the proper temperature, take the hot pan out and spread a single layer of fries on top. Next, return it to the hot oven and check the fries every few minutes until they've reached the desired degree of crispiness. A single serving of fries should take just a few minutes, but it might take up to 10 minutes if you're reheating a large batch. Once the fries are done, remove them from the oven and season to taste. They're really good french fries. Thank you. Well, they are mine. If you want to get creative, you can try putting them in your waffle iron to create some jumbo-sized waffle fries. You can also chop them up and use them to make hash browns or home fries. Or you could use them in a breakfast burrito, a skillet, or a frittata, or even in a soup. You could even try making them into a poutine, too. While reheated and or repurposed fries are never going to be quite as wonderful the second time around, isn't that also true of so many things in life? Just seize the day, grab the salt shaker, and scarf down those almost as good fries before they cool down again. There's a surprising amount of variety from one fast food spot to another when it comes to spuds, but only one fry reigns supreme. Can you guess which? We dare you not to race out for an order of fries after making your way through our ranking of the best and worst fast food fries in the nation. Has anybody ever not had an order of White Castle fries where at least half of them were not crispy at all? The castle does a lot of things well, but their crinkle-cut style fries aren't one of them. If they're not limp, then they're almost always lacking in salt. It's definitely not an issue of just one location not having its act together, either. This is true no matter what castle you choose to frequent. Yes, Dairy Queen does fries, but they probably shouldn't. Hit up DQ for a burger and some fries and you'll start questioning your life choices because you'll be paying way too much for a not-so-great meal. Fries aren't tough to get right, but part of DQ's problem seems to be getting them cooked completely, and that results in nothing but sadness. But here's the thing, Dairy Queen actually gets some points for their fries because you can make them better. Use them to dip in some ice cream and suddenly they're… Okay. Perfect! Shake Shack is the hippest of hipster places, with lines out the door for their burgers. The Shack had quite a blunder in 2013, though, when they switched fries from their crinkle cut to something more in line with their image, fresh cut. It didn't work. They went back to the original style and took out all the bad stuff to make a fresh, frozen crinkle cut fry. But it's still not very good. Johnny Rocket's fries are made with the skin on, which is awesome, and really the only way fries should be made. The problem starts when you add things like cheese, chili, and bacon, which is exactly what tends to happen when you're at Johnny Rocket's. That's when they tend to turn into a mushy mess, because a lot of the time, they just don't stand up to the topping. Skip the chili, get the fries, and you'll skip the regret, too. This chicken finger joint is a fan favorite any place where you can find it. The chain serves up a fine piece of chicken and a nice signature sauce. The fries, however, aren't great. They're crinkle cut, but they're often soggy and inconsistent. They taste pretty good with the chicken and the sauce working together, but on their own, Raising Cane's fries are, well, kind of gross. 
There are certainly people walking among us who think waffle-cut fries are superior to regular fries, but those people are wrong. If they were right, Chick-fil-A wouldn't be the only chain selling them. Chick-fil-A's waffle fries feel like the potato wasn't sure if it wanted to be a chip or a fry. And this odd compromise is what we get. If you get a fresh order that's crispy because they've been cooked a little longer, the fries will taste pretty good. They also pair nicely with Chick-fil-A's various nugget sauces, which is what you'll need to have in order to give these bland potatoes a bit of flavor. In-N-Out Burger is known for making everything in-house, from their hand-formed burger patties to, yes, their french fries. The fries are hand-cut and cooked in 100% sunflower oil, then sprinkled with salt, which sounds like a winning combo. But unfortunately, they fall flat. If you order a regular fries, they're typically pale and lacking in crispiness and flavor. You can go off-menu and order well-done fries, but if you have to go through that trouble just to make your food taste good, then that's a sign the classic recipe isn't working out. But. We're working really hard. You're not working hard enough. I need results. The fries here are good enough, but they're certainly not the stars of the menu. The natural cut fries have a little potato skin left on them for texture, which of course can be a positive or a negative depending on your preference. Regular fries not your thing? Then try the ones topped with truffle cheese and bacon. Even with those tasty fries, we doubt you'll be completely satisfied with your order. Even when smothered in sauces, these fries aren't tasty at all. In 2018, Taco Bell introduced nacho fries to their restaurants. These crispy fries are different from their burger chain counterparts in that after they're fried, they're coated in a signature Mexican seasoning blend. Then they're served with warm nacho cheese sauce. Believe it or not, these fries deliver. The potatoes themselves are crispy outside and soft inside, and the Mexican seasoning blend is just spicy enough that the nacho cheese sauce dip has a cooling effect. They're indeed worth a try, but we have to warn you, they're only available occasionally and they come pre-seasoned. So if you don't love that blend of spice, Spices, it looks like you're out of luck. No offense, but bad luck really seems to be following you around. If you go to Popeyes, you could get an order of the chain's Cajun fries as a side to your chicken, but honestly, you might be better off with a buttery biscuit. The fries aren't that bad, but there are some notable flaws. They have a crispy coating, but it seems like some sort of flour or cornstarch batter, and the fries themselves don't have that ultra-crisp exterior you hope for. They're actually kind of floppy beneath the coating. As for the seasoning, it's decent, but Verge is on the side of a little too salty. And if you're going to call something Cajun, it better set our taste buds on fire. It's not so bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's more tingly than hot. Yeah. <coughs> 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 Jack in the Box serves both plain and curly fries, but we'll stick to their standard French fries for the purpose of this review. The straight-cut spuds are crispy, not too salty or bland, and have a deeper potato flavor than those served up at other chains. That being said, there is a bit of an artificial flavor to them and a sort of greasiness that begs for ketchup or a dipping sauce. And though they're tasty when they're piping hot, as soon as they get cold, their texture becomes spongy and dry, which makes them a pain to consume. There's nothing more difficult to cook perfectly than the thin fry. It's as much of an acquired taste as the fresh-cut thick fry a lot of popular chains use. But Steak and Shake does two things very well. They're consistently crispy, and they're consistently hot. Shoestring fries might not be your thing, but at least you know what you're getting, which is a plus. And as a bonus, you can request to have them covered in cheese sauce, which automatically makes them ten times better. Wendy's has the setup for what seems, on paper, like they'd be perfect fries. The fries are cut from whole potatoes and left skin on, and they're fried in vegetable oil and seasoned with just a bit of sea salt. But there's just something missing. The fries are crispy outside, yes, but they don't have the moist, fluffy interior we crave in a fry of this width. Instead, they're curiously dry. They also don't have a lot of flavor. Bojangles does a lot of things right. One of those things is all-day breakfast. Another is great chicken. And finally, they make a wonderful seasoned flat steak fry. The easy way to season something is to make your seasoning overwhelmingly salt-based with some heat. You'll find that at a lot of restaurants that claim to serve seasoned fries, but not here. At Bojangles, the true Cajun kick really shines through in each bite. It's just a great fry. No ketchup needed. We're gonna go out on a limb and say that most A&W diners visit the place for its root beer, but this eatery also makes delicious french fries. Although they're not the best we've had, we wouldn't turn them down, and we definitely wouldn't share them with a friend, either. There are several sacred things in this world that you don't ever mess with. One of them happens to be another man's fries. The skin is left on, and the light salt and pepper seasoning is a perfect pairing with the obligatory root beer float. So to dip or not, that's up to you.
In a world of generic fast food french fries, Arby's curly fries are an outsider. They're a bright orange color, and when every other fry plays it straight, Arby's look like corkscrews. The bold yet not overwhelming peppery seasoning pairs up perfectly with Arby's roast beef sandwiches. Most of the time, Arby's curly fries have an extra crispy texture to them, though you may get the occasional random fry that could have used a little more deep fryer lovin'. Either way, they're superior in all aspects, hands down. A taco place with great fries? This doesn't make sense. But you know what Del Taco is? Familiar. Their crinkle-cut fries have a taste you've had before, just like the ones mom made for you on a Wednesday night. They're not trying to be anything fries shouldn't be, like one of those other taco joints we can think of. Their inviting flavor makes a trip to a taco joint just for fries so worth it. I'm hungry. Let's get a taco. Burger King employs a strategy that includes a classically uniform and crisp food fry, but made thick, like a hand-cut restaurant fry. Burger King's fries are made from real potatoes, but they utilize potato starch, rice flour, and a few other choice ingredients to boost the crunch factor and seasoning. What they're missing is flavor. Unfortunately, these fries can be a little bland. Drenching them in ketchup definitely helps. And they're by no means bad, but Burger King's fries aren't the best of the bunch. A lot of people may not realize that Wingstop even sells fries, but it turns out this is one of the best items on their menu. They start with hand-cut potatoes, which are then fried until crispy and tossed with the chain's signature seasoning blend. The seasoning adds a light, salty, peppery, and sweet bite to each fry, bringing out the caramelized notes of the fried potato. That being said, they do have a homemade vibe, meaning some fries remain softer while others get extra crunchy and browned. It's a textural wonderland. Add a side of dipping sauce if you're feeling fancy, and these hearty fries can be your home meal. Every fast food chain on the planet should be second-guessing their fries because of five guys. Hand-cut fries? Check. Generous helping? Check. These fries have the perfect amount of salt on them every time and have a texture that sits right in the sweet spot of being crispy without being dry. Sure, they might cost more than whatever sad potatoes Burger King is handing out, but buddy, they are so worth it. This isn't some hipster list where we name something you'd never heard of and declare that to be the greatest. Some things are classics for a reason, and that can definitely be said of McDonald's fries. Each fry is skinny, with a thick layer of crispy potato yielding to a moist, fluffy interior. The ratio of crunch to soft is spot on. They're the perfect combination of potato, savory beef flavoring, salt, and crunch. It's not hard to understand why everyone loves their fries so much. Those directions on the bag? They're steering you wrong. They don't tell you about air fryers or seasoning. Toss those instructions out and watch to learn how to do frozen fries right. You know how sometimes frozen pizza cooking instructions will suggest cooking the pizza directly on the oven rack if you want a crispier crust? Well, the same goes for frozen french fries. You have two options. Either place a cooling rack on top of a baking sheet so there is space between the surface of the rack and the pan, or just cook the fries directly on the cooling rack. Cooking the fries on a rack, as opposed to directly, makes space for more air circulation and gives the moisture released from the fries somewhere to go besides pooling underneath the fry, potentially making it wet. The moisture instead drops into the pan, which, in turn, creates steam. And this helps ensure even crisping and browning on all sides of the fry. It's fried potato magic. In general, when it comes to frozen french fry cooking methods, we prefer to trust the potato country's potato experts. According to the Idaho Potato Commission, while you technically can let a frozen french fry thaw out before cooking it, it's not the ideal scenario. The potatoes cook faster when thawed, but if they're still in a completely frozen state when they hit the heat, the fry's surface remains sealed as it cooks, which yields a crispier, this is what a french fry should always taste like, final product. The same goes for baking or air frying the fries. Get everything heated, prepped, and ready before you pull out the fries, so there isn't too long of a lag time between frozen and starting the cooking process. If you cook frozen fries in an air fryer as opposed to the oven, there is a greater chance the entire surface of the fry will get cooked due to the design of the air fryer, which features an effective heating element and a fan that quickly circulates air within the chamber and around the items in the basket. You'll end up with all-around crispier fries that don't require much added oil, just a spritz of cooking spray on the basket of the air fryer and the fries, and some shaking of the basket halfway through the cooking process. That end result? Irresistible. Where'd you get these? Can I have them? No. It's the universal truth that french fries are nothing without a generous sprinkling of salt. 
Having said that, if you are using frozen fries that are plain and not pre-seasoned, it might be worth adding an acidic component as part of your seasoning in addition to salt. An acidic ingredient like lemon juice, for example, combined in a very small dose with the oil used to cook the fries, can bring out the flavor and potentially keep the fries from browning too much. Vinegar is another acidic ingredient that can bring out the best in French fries. Just look at what the combination does in potato chips. Tomatoes are an acidic food, which might explain why ketchup is such a delicious accompaniment to fries. Honestly, this might be hard to hear, but one of the biggest reasons why your store-bought frozen french fries might not taste nearly as good as the fries you order at a restaurant is that you're not using an actual deep fryer. They're called french fries for a reason. If you want legit, delicious fried potatoes, you have to, well, fry them. Yes, the oil will splatter, and yes, the cleanup might be a bit harder, but how badly do you want it? We're just pointing out, you always have the option to actually dip those frozen fries into a vat of hot oil in order to achieve the perfect flavor and texture. If you don't have a commercial or small home-friendly fryer, you can always use a sturdy pot or pan. By preheating the pan in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes in a perfect world, before you put the frozen fries on it, you are more likely to guarantee the fries developed a seared, crunchy outer layer that doesn't require any actual frying on your part. Tossing the potatoes halfway through the cooking time is still necessary to get an even cooking if you go this route. Just be sure to never underestimate the power of a very hot pan. And of course, be safe and have your oven mitts on and ready when pulling the preheating pan out of the oven. Salt is an essential ingredient for the perfect french fry. A common misfire in the world of frozen fry preparation is assuming you need to salt the fries before you cook them. But it's best to apply the salt to the fries as soon as they emerge from the oven, deep fryer or air fryer. Salting the fries as soon as they're done cooking helps the salt stick to the fries better. While it's possible your fries come pre-salted, it never hurts to still add a dose of salt when you cook them. And the best time to do this is when the fries are hot out of your chosen cooking receptacle, not anytime sooner. You might not even consider the source of the frozen french fries as a reason why they might not be as tasty as the restaurant kind. But there is some validity to the notion that where you buy the frozen fries can affect the eventual outcome of its frying. It's actually kind of important to skip the smaller corner stores when buying frozen fries, and instead pick them up from a larger store that will have more regular turnover, and in turn, fries that haven't been sitting in a freezer for who knows how long. Also, the freezers are better at bigger grocers, and this information is simultaneously mind-blowing and the most logical thing we've ever heard. The moral of this story is, support the small local businesses, but not when you're purchasing frozen french fries. There are a lot of rules for making crispy french fries. And while most of our favorite restaurants are getting it right, some fast food fries still don't end up as crispy as we would like. Here are some secrets from the professionals. If you want to fry potatoes to crispy perfection, you need to start with the right deep fryer because it's an appliance specifically designed to heat oil to a precise set of temperatures. There are versions for home cooks, but commercial fryers are in a league of their own, and the pros argue that they make better fries. They're designed for heavy-duty use, holding the fryer oil at exact temperatures for hours. Many of them are hooked up directly to a gas line, too, which allows restaurants to recover temperatures faster. The other important thing these commercial appliances allow you to do is to reuse fryer oil very efficiently, and that's surprisingly important. It turns out that aged oil actually makes the fries crispier than new oil. You see, the fats in the oil start to break down as it's exposed to heat. That might sound bad, but it's a huge plus when it comes to making crispy french fries. The oil molecules in this aged oil will bond more effectively with the food, resulting in a crispier product. That doesn't mean all aged oil works. When the oil gets too old, it can start to smoke, which creates an off flavor for your french fries. It's also important to filter the oil really well to remove any food bits or impurities that can burn. The specific temperature of the frying oil matters a lot. Deep frying works because the hot oil dehydrates the surface of the food, creating a crust that prevents the absorption of too much fat-filled oil. It basically forms a protective barrier, but it only works at the correct temperature range. Drop below the range and the crust will form too slowly, allowing the oil to soak into the food. That can create a soggy, oily french fry instead of a perfectly crispy one. On the other hand, frying at excessively hot temperatures can burn the outside of the potato before the inside cooks through. What's the secret? It turns out that the range of 325 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect for fried foods. Fast food restaurants know the true secret to making the crispiest french fries. Fry them not once, but twice. It's the secret that Burger King, Five Guys, and Wendy's uses to make their fries crispy on the outside but soft on the inside. 
They typically start by frying the cut potatoes at around 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about a minute. When the fries start to turn a light golden brown, they remove them from the heat and let them cool for 10 to 15 minutes. This first round in the fryer par cooks the potato, starting to cook the insides of the french fry while simultaneously building a protective crust on the outside. Once the potato is cooled, they fry it a second time until the fry is crispy and golden. The temperature will need to be around 375 degrees, although some restaurants use temperatures as high as 400 degrees. The second frying session takes a couple minutes longer, but it results in the perfect balance between textures. Soft but crispy. It's worth the extra effort, right? No! It's a chip up the nose, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh. When it comes to making the perfect french fry, the potato itself is more important than you'd think. There are all kinds of different potatoes out there. Beyond color and size differences, potatoes are classified as waxy or starchy. If it contains a lot of water, it's considered a waxy potato. And these potatoes aren't well suited for frying, as they turn out soggy and limp because they don't contain enough starches to crisp up. Starchy potatoes, on the other hand, fry up perfectly. The starch molecules expand and burst when they encounter the hot oil, resulting in a perfect interior texture and a crispy exterior. Most fast food restaurants use russet potatoes, also known as Burbank or Idaho potatoes, because they make a crispier, tastier french fry that will stand up to whatever you dunk them in. The oil fast food restaurants choose is just as important as the potato choice. Each type of cooking oil has something called a smoke point, the temperature at which the oil starts to physically smoke. When this happens, it breaks down the fats in the oil, creating a burnt flavor and aroma. That's why you want to choose an oil with a smoke point higher than your targeted frying temperature. Those are oils like vegetable oil, peanut oil, corn oil, canola oil, or sunflower seed oil. The smoke point isn't the only important factor here. Each type of oil also has a unique flavor profile. Take McDonald's. The real reason McDonald's fries taste better than other fast food restaurants is because they originally used beef tallow. They might use vegetable oil today, but they add a chemical flavoring to the oil to mimic the way the fries tasted when they were cooked in beef fat. A little attention to detail goes a long, long way. We can all agree, a soggy french fry is no good at all. Your air fryer can deliver better if you pick the right brand. But which one to choose? Veggie? Curly? Waffle? Sweet potato? Let's untangle this mess with a list from worst to best. If your favorite part about a trip to Red Robin is the chain's bottomless french fries, you may be tempted to purchase their frozen seasoned steak fries. But the moment you taste these fries, you'll instantly regret succumbing to that temptation. While frozen Red Robin onion rings are really good, their frozen fries are an unmitigated disaster. First of all, the seasoning is completely different. At their restaurants, the fries are so tasty that you'll be licking your fingers between each fry. Their frozen ones, on the other hand, have very little seasoning. Secondly, the texture inside the fry is way too dry. As a result, eating Red Robin's frozen fries is like you're chewing on potatoey chalk. If you want Red Robin's fries at their best, go to one of their restaurants. They taste far superior to the frozen variety, plus you can get an unlimited amount. That's a win-win and a disaster averted. If potatoes don't do it for you, Green Giant has a line of veggie fries. The three options to replace the potatoes are zucchini, cauliflower, and broccoli. While these veggie fries may look yummy on the packaging, they will undoubtedly let you down. There are several sacred things in this world that you don't ever mess with. One of them happens to be another man's fries. When you bite into one of these fries, the mushy texture is so off-putting that it may cause you to spit it out into the trash. With no flavor that's worth writing home about, Green Giant's veggie fries will taste like diet food the entire time they're in your mouth. If you can't eat real fries, pick something else rather than these veggie fries. They're just not worth your money. Nathan's Famous is famous for their hot dogs, and for a good reason. If you're looking for grocery store hot dogs, their wieners can't be beat, and the competition isn't even a tight one. Once you try a Nathan's Famous hot dog, nothing else will ever compare to it. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the frozen fries that they sell. You can find jumbo crinkle-cut french fries made by Nathan's Famous in the freezer aisle, but if you make the mistake of purchasing these fries, you'll soon be disappointed. These things lack crispiness and saltiness, two attributes that make a high-quality french fry. While Nathan's Famous has the reputation for being a premium brand, these fries are most reminiscent of those crinkle-cut fries you ate in your elementary school's cafeteria. They're entirely forgettable and should be avoided. According to a survey conducted by Mashed, over 26% of our readers selected Kroger as the brand that has the worst frozen french fries. While we don't have their fries at the bottom of our list, it's definitely true that Kroger french fries are best to be ignored. No matter if you cook Kroger's fries in an oven or in an air fryer, you'll always be dismayed by the sogginess of the resulting fries.
While Trader Joe's has cult food items that are so unbelievably good that it's okay to obsess about them, they also have a number of overrated food items. Sadly, Trader Joe's handsome cut potato fries are closer to the latter than the former. Although these fries are priced right, are only 140 calories per serving, and have an aesthetically pleasing uniformity about them, they're not good enough to recommend. Handsome or not, you'll want to look the other way. Trader Joe's fries taste average. They are a little bit on the bland side of the spectrum and are a little too chewy. It's almost like leather got mixed into the recipe at some point in the process. Trader Joe's has a lot of food items that are a great match for your air fryer. These fries, though, aren't one of them. If you're looking for fast food curly fries that are seasoned to perfection and always have the optimal texture, head to Arby's. You'll never be disappointed. So it would make perfect sense to buy frozen Arby's curly fries that you can store in your freezer until the time is right. Tragically, the idea turns out to be too good to be true. These fries are okay, but they're nowhere near as good as the curly fries Arby's hands you at their drive through windows. The seasoning is lighter, and the texture just isn't what we've grown accustomed to from Arby's. For these frozen curly fries to taste their best, you'll need to use a deep fryer. But even then, they're still not as good. Save yourself the aggravation and go to Arby's when you want awesome curly fries. It's always worth the trip to get your hands on those bad boys. At Sam's Club, you can discover a number of Members Mark products that were obviously inspired by the food available at Chick-fil-A. Members Mark waffle fries look exactly like the waffle potato fries available at Chick-fil-A. Though the waffle fries look the same, the Members Mark version isn't as good. If you buy these fries at Sam's Club, you won't be too disheartened as they're still a decent enough fry. Even though they're not as good as the waffle fries from Chick-fil-A, they're tasty enough to be considered average. These things are a little bit dry, but if you use a whole lot of dipping sauce, that dryness won't become too much of a problem. Problem. When only the best potato will do, one state immediately comes to mind. Idaho. Located in the Pacific Northwest, the Gem State has the perfect growing conditions for potatoes. While grown in Idaho's crinkle cut fries and waffle fries are nothing to brag about, look for their super crispy steak cut fries or their super crispy dipper fries. The steak cut fries are big and flavorful. They're crispy on the outside and exploding with flavor on the inside. The dipper fries are like the French fry version of Lay's potato chips, and they're even better than you'd expect. There's no way that you'd be able to eat just one of these dipper fries. If you're factoring in value when selecting your frozen french fry brand of choice, great value fries deserve to be in the conversation. This Walmart brand of frozen fries comes with a very reasonable price tag and the fries are tasty. While there are a lot of options when it comes to great value frozen fries, the best choice is their crinkle cut fries. If you can't find the crinkle cut fries, great value seasoned fries are also better than average. The seasoning is perfectly balanced and is so potent that you won't need to dip it in anything. When it comes to frozen french fries, McCain is an extremely trustworthy brand that has decades of experience. In fact, this company has been making frozen french fries in the Canadian town of Florenceville since 1957. They've had so much success and so many satisfied customers that these days, Florenceville claims it's the french fry capital of the world. If you can't decide which of McCain's many french fry varieties to try first, go with the classic cut fries. These beauties look very much like McDonald's fries and they also taste similar. McCain also has great options for those who are short on time. Their five-minute fries and their quick waffle fries will allow you to speed up the process without losing any of the goodness that you know and love. The famous seasoned fries made by Checkers are truly glorious. Depending on which region of the country you're in, you'll see either Checkers or Rallies. If you've eaten at a Checkers or a Rallies, you know full well about the deliciousness of their fries. Well, the French fries are pretty good. Truth be told, their fries are usually the best part about your visit to one of these fast food establishments. Somehow, some way, their frozen fries are just as tasty. Or maybe even a little bit tastier. It almost classifies as a culinary miracle. Whole Foods isn't exactly known for having low prices, but they do have some amazing 365 products on their shelves that are worth every additional penny. One such item is their crinkle cut french fries. These Whole Foods 365 branded fries are spectacularly good, even though there is no salt added. While Whole Foods 365 finished third in our ranking, this brand actually finished second in a mashed survey of best frozen french fries. Even though Alexia is a relative newcomer to the world of frozen french fries, they've quickly become a force that must be recognized. They're proud of using high-quality ingredients and ensuring that all of their seasoning is finely tuned. The result is a line of products that are sure to thrill your taste buds far beyond your expectations. While their organic Yukon Select fries are the way to go if you're craving traditional french fries, it's Alexia's sweet potato fries that will steal your heart. These fries are the ultimate combination of savoriness, sweetness, and saltiness. Moreover, the texture of each and every 
savory fry is perfect. Even if you think you're not a fan of sweet potatoes, there's still a high probability that you will adore these fries. They're really good french fries. Thank you. Well, they are my really good french fries. If you've ever purchased frozen french fries, you're familiar with Orida. This ubiquitous brand can be found in every corner of the country. While this brand is perhaps most well-known for inventing tater tots, it's their extravagant fries that allow them to stand out from the competition. Orida produces more than a dozen types of frozen fries, and they're all delectable. Their golden shoestring french fries are better than any fast food fries. And their zesty curly fries will wow you with their shape, seasoning, and texture. The only downside to Orida is that since all of their varieties are so stupendous, you'll need to try them all. By the end of your Orida taste testing journey, you'll understand why this brand is the runaway winner. Just about everyone loves French fries. And whether you like them curly, thick, sweet, truffled, or topped, it's always good to know who does them best. From coast to coast, here are the absolute best French fries in every state. Each meal at Carrigan's comes with a side of house-cut fries. But the real deal at this trendy Birmingham pub are the loaded fries, a savory combination of braised oxtail chili, smoked gouda cheese, house-made hipster ranch sauce, and jalapenos make these more of a hearty, full meal than a side. Located in the trendy Spinard neighborhood of Anchorage, Tommy's Burger Stop pulls inspiration from both New Orleans and Philadelphia cuisine. The restaurant won the Anchorage Daily News Best of Alaska Burger in 2019, but don't sleep on the fries that come with it. In particular, reviewers rave about the Cajun seasoning that puts these particular fries over the edge. Zinc Bistro doesn't skimp on the good stuff. AZ Central's food critic describes the paprika and herb dusted frites as tender and fresh, with a good hint of smokiness on both the fries and the aioli dipping sauce. It'll cost you, though. The fixed-price dinner for two at Zinc will run you a cool $150. Luckily, the fancy fries alone are much more reasonable, at just $6 per serving. Maddie's Place is beloved in Arkansas for its crispy fried seafood, po' boy sandwiches, and of course, their absolutely perfect French fries. Indeed, both Rock City Eats and AY Magazine rank these fries in their top 10 lists for being perfectly thin and crispy and coming out in a generous portion to boot. In and out simple, unadorned fries are pretty controversial, but their impact on the fast food industry can't be denied. All their fries are hand cut and fried in sunflower oil, so they're vegan friendly too. Unless you go with the chain's iconic animal style fries, which come with cheese, grilled onions, and Thousand Island dressing, of course. At Cuba Cuba, a popular local chain in Denver, the Mojo fries are the way to go. These are perfect for garlic lovers, and they're thin cut and served with house made ketchup. Mojo sauce is typically made with garlic, oil, and citrus, and the fries are tossed and fried in that combo, which is then served as a side for dipping. Jeffers and Fry Company is a burger joint that knows what the people are really there to eat. It's in the name. Indeed, they have a staggering 18 types of fries to choose from on the menu. Your bet's taking some friends to this one because it's going to be impossible to choose just one kind to order. Whether you say potato or potato, there's one thing we all agree on. French fries here are delicious. Matt's Fish Camp in Lewis is a popular seafood spot that combines its signature crab dishes with easily the best fries in the state. In particular, the crabby fries cost $11. But don't let the price scare you away. They are made using Old Bay fondue and are featured as Yelp's top pick for fries in the state. Hot Dog Heaven is an Orlando joint that serves Chicago-style hot dogs far from the icy streets of the Windy City. And the relatively simple menu includes a serving of fries that should go nicely with a good dog. Several Yelp reviews also call out how hot the fries are, so you know they're always bound to be fresh, too. Atlanta's Slutty Vegan is a buzzy, saucy, black-owned and operated all-plant-based restaurant. No meat with these fries. They make indulgent stacked burgers made with impossible meat, all served with either crinkle cut or straight fries, which are sprinkled with a special savory and secret spice mix. Foursquare ranks Mahaloha Burger as some of the best fries in the whole state of Hawaii. They're probably best known for the Loco Moco Burger, a modern Hawaiian staple of white rice, hamburger, and a fried egg. Fair that with Mahaloha's crispy sweet potato fries, and you've got a perfect island match to munch on in paradise. Considering that Idaho is the potato capital of the world, it's bound to be a struggle to find the best of the best. 
but you know a restaurant dedicated to one thing better do it well, and that's certainly the case at Boise Fry Company. Their tagline is, burgers on the side, and the fry combination options boast six types of potatoes, five different cuts, nine scrumptious dipping sauces, and even different styles of salt to complement each fry. Freestyle is a buzzy black-owned restaurant in Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood, serving up classic Belgian palm frites, with a major twist added to the mix. These are full meals on top of a bed of twice-fried fries, with menu options including chicken alfredo, Caribbean shrimp, jerk salmon, and more. Popcat is famous for its cosmic fries, which even made Food Network's top 10 fries in America back in 2015. You can have them OG-style, beer-battered, sprinkled with black pepper and served with cheese sauce, or you could get them loaded with bacon and jalapenos. Whatever takes your fancy, really, it's all pretty good. Duck fat is the true upper crust of French fry frying material, as it brings out a real sense of depth and whole new layers of flavor. And naturally, the duck frites at Des Moines' Django fully embrace the indulgence. The food critic for the Des Moines Register sums it up poetically. Not quite shoestring but skinny, crisp on the outside, fluffy on the inside, and just salty enough. Joe's Kansas City Barbecue opened in a gas station in 1996 and has been a local favorite ever since and the fries might well be the star of the show. The Kansas City star ran a bracket for best French fries in the city, and this spot took the top spot. These fries are fried skin on, and then coated in a barbecue-inspired mix of salt, brown sugar, garlic, onion, paprika, and beef flavor. Hammerhead's, a local upscale barbecue chain in the Louisville area, elevates typical finger-licking French fries with a deep fry in succulent duck fat. Don't worry, though, because they stick to their own down-south roots with the Gribbo fries, which are perfectly flavored with a sweet and spicy barbecue seasoning. Arnaud's, one of the oldest and classiest French restaurants in New Orleans, serves a kind of fry variant known as palm souffle. They are typically sliced thin, fried twice, and puff up into puffy little pillows. The 100-year-old restaurant itself is a classic New Orleans experience in the heart of Bourbon Street and offers the most romantic of dinners with a live jazz soundtrack. The aptly named Duck Fats Fries made the top five of the Daily Meal's national rankings in 2017, and it's easy to see why. The outlet cites Duck Fats award-winning chef as the brains behind these crispy, perfectly seasoned fries, which are served with your choice of eight dipping sauces. Thrashers in Ocean City is a classic beachfront fry shack that takes potato quality very seriously indeed, importing thousands and thousands of pounds of spuds from Idaho. The fries are generously salted and served in a giant iconic bucket with a truly classic accompaniment, apple cider vinegar. With its simple and affordable dishes sourced from local farms, Northampton's local burger easily rules the roost in Massachusetts. The fries are as basic as they come, with the simplest version being made with salt, pepper, and garlic seasoning. But what they lack in complexity, they more than make up for in flavor. The fries at Midland Burger Company are so popular that they're known for selling out before the day is out. The joint opened as a food truck, which is usually only found in the summer, but they've also opened an additional location in the Midland Mall, so you can enjoy your fries all year round. Fries aren't relegated to being just a side dish at Bambox. One popular menu item, the Lunchbox, is a hearty burger topped with hot shoestring fries placed right on the patty. Oh, and in case you were wondering, yes, this place did make an appearance in The Mighty Ducks too. Beat that, McDonald's. How many Mighty Ducks movies were you in? Are you ready to fly? Yeah! Kiefer's regularly wins various categories in the Best of Jackson, including Best Hangover Food and, naturally, Best Fries. The Mediterranean restaurant serves a variety of gyro and pita sandwiches, but they're best known for their cottage fries, which are really just a whole potato sliced thin lengthwise. Those come topped with an accompanying feta dressing that's so popular, it's bottled and sold separately. The fries at Big E's start with high-quality potatoes, of course, which are chilled after cutting and then deep-fried. The kitchen staff usually cut potatoes twice a day, so you know these babies are fresh, too. Get them as a side dish to the tender meat of your choosing, or meld barbecue with fry life with the French fry plate, which is served with barbecue sauce, meat, and cheese. The Hoagieville Cheese Fries at the Montana Club won the Great Falls Tribune's Best Fries in 2018, for one pretty simple reason. People love fries, and people love cheese. Order a huge platter of the secretly spiced indulgence as an appetizer, or right on top of your beef patty. 
These cottage-cut cheese drench fries are certainly a local celebrity in their own right, and for good reason, too. Dario's is an upscale Belgian brasserie in Omaha, and it has won all kinds of accolades for its fancy fries. These Belgian-style frites are thin and crispy, with the skins left on for great texture. One Redditor has this hot tip. Order them with the blue cheese mussels and use them to mop up all that sweet, sweet blue cheese butter mussel sauce. Beefy's in Reno is known for serving up jaw-dropping over-the-top burgers. The fries, by contrast, are pretty simple, but they still come in pretty much every shape and size. The garlic fries are a real favorite, however, with a generous helping of minced garlic thrown right on top. Probably not great for date night, though. Fresh breasts priority in my life. Wingett's won one of the top spots in WMUR-TV's list of New Hampshire best fries in 2016 and came in second place in 2020, proving that the so-called wing butcher is continuing to wow with some truly special fries. They're hand-cut to half an inch thick and served with your choice of seasonings and toppings, from fire cider to curry mayo to bacon jam. Fries are really just a humble canvas, one that anyone can paint a masterpiece on. And New Jersey's retro-style TikTok diner has done just that with the invention of disco fries. Sort of an American take on poutine with brown gravy and melted mozzarella, this instantly iconic dish has been replicated in similar joints across the country. New Mexicans love their green hatch chili, so much so that they'll put it on pretty much anything. And for a true Southwestern experience, you'll want to head on down to Jake's Cafe in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Order the green chili cheese fries, which are smothered with green enchilada sauce and cheese, and you'll find out why this place is such a hit with the locals. New York City is home to some seriously amazing fries, but for the best of the best, you'll need to head to the western part of the state, where Taffy's in Orchard Park has been serving hot dogs, milkshakes, and curly hand-cut fries for more than 70 years. Basically, they know what they're doing. The News & Observer rates Al's Burger Shack in Chapel Hill for having the best crinkle cuts in the region, which are simply prepared by seasoning them with salt and rosemary. Of course, crinkle cuts aren't the most popular fries in the world, but Al's might just convince you to give them another chance. North Dakota is remarkable for being home to an actual French fry festival, so you know the state isn't messing around. If you miss the festival itself, JL Beers has locations throughout the state, and you really won't want to sleep on their fries. Heck, they'll even serve you a burger with potato chips if that's what you really want. But come on, get the fries. Melt Bar & Grilled is a mini empire in Ohio with 12 locations throughout the state. It's mostly known for serving up some seriously shocking grilled cheese concoctions, but the fries are the perfect accompaniment to that particular dish. The classic fries come with every grilled cheese order, or you can shift gears and go for the hangover fries, which are topped with pulled pork, cheese, gravy, and a fried egg. If you are not a fan of complex cuts and crazy toppings, then the fries at Tucker's Onion Burgers will do just the trick. These crispy, tender, and straightforward fries are hand-selected, hand-cut, and fried in peanut oil. At $2.59, they're perfectly affordable, too. And the portion size can best be described as a bucketful. Talk about getting your money's worth. It should come as no surprise that a lot of restaurants with great burgers also back it up with their fries. Killer Burger is one such place. Well, several places in the Portland and Eugene areas. Notably, however, every burger here comes with not only a side of fries, but a side of crispy bacon as well. It's a match made in heaven. Cremonti Brothers is known throughout Pittsburgh and beyond for putting French fries in their stacked sandwiches. The legend goes that a potato purveyor brought a truckload of potatoes to the restaurant, so the chef fried them up and threw some on the sandwiches. This street food wonder has since become famous all around the world. The name of the game at Frisky Fries is Decadence. There are 12 kinds of dressed fries on the menu, topped with everything from clam chowder and bacon to chocolate and marshmallows. The menu is constantly changing, and with several locations around the state, you'll never be far from the perfect over-the-top snack. Grill Marks, which has locations in Greenville and Columbia, serves up fries of the skinny, fat, truffle parm, and sweet potato varieties. They then kick it up a notch with loaded fries, chowder top fries, and their crowd favorite, blue cheese and pimento cheese fries. Tap House 41 is a pub that does three things above all else – beer, burgers, and bourbon. But the fries aren't to be sniffed at either, being fried in duck fat and topped with Parmesan salt. As one Facebook user sums it up, 
If you go here and don't get the duck fat fries, you are doing it wrong. The name might be a mouthful, but many have called the hand-cut fries at Riverside Grill Shack and UberTuber hand-cut fries the best in Nashville. These fries are lightly seasoned with salt, pepper, and garlic, come with a variety of delicious dipping sauces, and are included with every sandwich order. Rodeo Goat is a hot spot with locations all over Texas that's best known for the cheese fries surprise, which will include a topping of the chef's choosing, often chili cheese or chorizo. This makes dining there something of a genuine experience, along with the weekly Battle of the Burgers, of course, in which customers vote for burgers by ordering them. Choose wisely. Located in Provo, BYU Creamery is an ice cream parlor and grocery store that's part of Brigham Young University's dining services. But don't let the innocuous location throw you off. Their fries are up there with the best. And if you're one of those people who dip McDonald's french fries in soft serve as a kid, this just might be the spot for you. Al's French Fries in Burlington have been serving burgers, shakes, and fries from a roadside stand since the 1940s. And with age, it seems, comes quality. As USA Today named them a Great American Bite back in 2013. They're served by the cup, pint, or quart, so you can choose the size to match your craving. A simple slate of add-ons include gravy, cheese, or chili for a small extra fee. Ben's Chili Bowl is certainly a D.C. institution, but there's now a location in Arlington, Virginia, and their fries are some of the best in the state. This 60-year-old, black-owned restaurant is known best for its chili, of course, which is served on top of hot dogs and half-smokes. Of course, you're gonna want to get the chili cheese fries to get the true Ben's experience. The state of Washington is known for its excellent Asian cuisine, thanks to its location on the Pacific Northwest coast. Katsu Burger is a statewide chain known for Japanese fusion tonkatsu-style burgers. The fries bring in a dash of Japanese flavor, too, with the dried seaweed spice nori fries being a particular crowd favorite. Charleston loves its cheese fries, and the most popular around are the PG fries from Sam's Uptown Cafe. This creation came about by accident when a customer asked for chili cheese fries and the chef rustled up the closest thing he could. They were a poorly kept secret until 2016, when they finally showed up on the actual menu. Camino is known for burgers, sandwiches, and an impressive beer list, all of which go great with some thin, crispy, and perfectly seasoned fries. Each meal here is served with your choice of multiple sides, too, from Brussels sprouts to beet salad. But come on, it's always going to be the fries, isn't it? The Crow Bar & Grill serves up classic American fare in the college town of Laramie. Their fries get some extra attention, though, for one reason in particular – Pad Thai fries. These are the most famous of the crowbar fries and come with a sweet and spicy peanut-based pad thai sauce on top. Unusual? Sure. Delicious? Undoubtedly. Making the best homemade french fries can be tricky. Some may have already tried several at-home hacks for getting amazingly crunchy french fries, but to no avail. At the end of the day, it has a lot to do with choosing the right kind of oil to cook them in and properly frying them. Many might suggest only frying fresh potatoes twice to get the perfect texture with a crispy crunch. But let's be honest, that's time we don't always have. Here's where frozen french fries come in. Not only are they a bit easier, but they only require one time in the fryer. This is because frozen fries have already been par-cooked, so you don't have to worry about cooking them through. It's more so a matter of heating them up and getting a crunchy exterior. The only risk you run is making sure the fries don't have freeze or burn or ice on them, which could cause the oil to spatter far and wide. You want to enjoy those fries without nursing a burn, right? Bottom line, you'll need to opt for one of the best oils for frying french fries to ensure they turn out to be the stuff of family legend. Just pay them the fries they love to eat for the foods they don't. Do you not have a problem with this? We're just going to trust a random woman? I mean, she does make some really good points. I know. There are three primary qualities to consider when selecting an oil for frying your french fries at home. The oil needs to be capable of reaching a high heat without going above its smoke point. The best oil should also be rather neutral, so it does not flavor the fries as they cook. It's important to consider the cost of the oil before you buy it, too. For example, peanut oil is excellent for frying french fries which is likely why Chick-fil-A uses so much of it. After all, the chain is one of the largest purchasers of peanut oil in the U.S., and if that's not a glowing recommendation, then nothing else will be. It seems Chick-fil-A springs for this specific type of oil because it makes their fries taste great. 
but the oil also retains some of its health benefits and still reaches a high temperature of 450 degrees. But it is also on the expensive side, which is why canola oil is another great option. It checks all of the boxes without breaking the bank. What about other fry giants? McDonald's uses soybean oil, among other types of oil, so you might consider using it instead, too. However, refined sunflower or refined corn oils are also good options. All of these oils are far less expensive than peanut oil, but are still capable of reaching a high enough temperature for frying. These oils are also neutral in flavor, so they won't leave behind a residual flavor in the french fries themselves. No matter what kind of oil you opt for, there's one tip that you really should keep in mind. Overcrowding the fryer can cause the food to end up tasting soggy. And that's because when too much food is placed in a vat of hot oil, it lowers the temperature. When the temperature is lower, less moisture is driven out of the fries. That means there's a combination of water and oil in the fries making it seem greasy. So be patient, and don't put too many fries into the oil at once. If you cannot find other oils such as safflower or soybean, and prefer to skip canola in favor of peanut oil, it can be used in a cost-effective way. Peanut oil is the favorite pick for many people, but it doesn't make the cost any less difficult to swallow for a single batch of french fries. Fortunately, you can reuse oil multiple times before changing it out. In fact, you can save old oil and add some of it into a new batch to improve how efficiently it will fry. However, once frying oil becomes dark and dirty looking with an off-putting smell, it's time to change it out. Unfortunately, this happens fast at home because food that falls to the bottom of the pan can burn more quickly and easily change the color, smell, and flavor of the oil faster. So you need to be very careful to fry quickly and avoid letting food fall to the bottom of the pot if you'd like to reuse pricier oil for frying. Sure, not all of us have the hundred bucks it takes just to get in the door of one particular swanky steakhouse, but it might be worth it to experience some of the crispiest, truffliest, parmesaniest fries out there. Based in the Big Apple, Smith & Walensky's upscale lounges have populated the East Coast and international hotspots, such as London to Taipei, pairing a marrow-soaked filet mignon or a Wagyu burger with the truffle fries is the sort of indulgent touch we'd look for from this steakhouse institution. There's a lot more to what we do than just steak. Steaming hot and salty, these fries are great for sopping up the succulent juices, while the umami funk of the truffle variety upgrades an already indulgent experience. In any case, the potatoes are sliced into hefty spears and fried to a golden brown hue. While there are razor-thin shoestring fries and heftier wedges elsewhere, Smith & Walensky offers a happy medium. Not into the mushroomy aroma of truffle fries? Thankfully, the standard hand-cut fries can't miss, especially for about $10. Wolfgang's Steakhouse was established by Wolfgang Zwiener, not Wolfgang Puck. Zwiener is a legend in his own right. He has over 40 years in the restaurant industry and 21 steakhouses under his belt. But what we're really here for when we talk about Wolfgang's is the fries. Hearty and filling, they're carved over an inch thick with a battered exterior that's ballerina light and airy, perfect for sopping up peppercorn sauce or ketchup. New York Magazine highlights the establishment's cottage fries, a cross between potato chips and baked wedges. Truthfully, though, customers appear to enjoy both types of fries. But whether ordering a delightfully large porterhouse or the lunch menu's signature hamburger, traditional frites can't fail. To sample them yourself will likely require venturing to the East Coast, most locations of Wolfgang's Steakhouse, save for Boston, Massachusetts, and Somerville, New Jersey, are in New York. The company also operates in Hawaii, as well as several international locations. Side dishes aren't a concept that Morton's The Steakhouse takes lightly, not when its signature sides are such a huge deal. Many of us sitting down for our reservations would be wise to opt for the restaurant's matchstick parmesan and truffle fries, a true staple. Arriving in a huge haystack infused with truffle, herbs, and sharp parmesan, these fries are supremely crunchy and airy, with a skinny shape that's engineered for non-stop snacking. On top of that, they're plenty versatile with a variety of prime meats and glorious appetizers. Did we mention they're discounted on the steakhouse's happy hour menu? Potato lovers are in luck at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, whether they like them scalloped, creamed, baked to perfection, or even served as dessert. Their signature side 
is a sweet potato casserole. Honestly, this thing is so good and so sweet, a lot of people get it for dessert. Whatever variation someone chooses, they can use it to top off a sizzling chop of your choice. At one point, the steakhouse chain served stick-thin shoestring fries, but somewhere along the way a shift occurred to the classically cut julienne fries found on the menu today. Who can tell the difference when they're exceptionally crunchy and seasoned just right? In this case, Ruth's Chris using the word julienne is referencing the slicing technique utilized across an array of vegetables, and most popularly, potatoes. Carving them this way makes them noticeably slimmer, with a thinner width associated with the kind that comes with your Big Mac. And as you might expect, the shape is part of the reason why these fries result in such a dark golden hue and snap with every nibble. The palm, claiming around 20 chop houses, is centered around Italian cuisine. The original owners didn't intend sirloins to be their specialty. Italian steakhouse isn't a concept you hear too often. Luxurious dishes like the chicken parmigiana are served alongside pastas and pizzas. And when choosing a side, there's no reason not to try green beans with pancetta or black truffle risotto. But allow us, if you will, to offer a counterpoint with the Italian herb hand-cut fries, a flavorfully fragrant take you'll be wishing every eatery jumped on. Even though the menu doesn't describe the seasoning blend per se, our instincts fall back on the staples of Italian cooking — basil, oregano, and rosemary — that evokes a fragrant note on top of the ample coating of salt. These fries are delightfully crispy, with uneven edges, and if you want to experience them for yourself, Midtown Manhattan is where you'll find the original restaurant. But other locations are scattered around the U.S. plus Mexico. While it can be a bit campy, Outback Steakhouse is more accessible and bargain-friendly than most high-end dining establishments serving steak. When you throw boomerangs, they come back. Both times I was thrown out of Outback, I came back. Two varieties of fries are available to choose from. There's the highly seasoned Aussie fries, and then there's the appetizer that's hot on everybody's lips, the heavily loaded Aussie cheese fries drenched in cheese and bacon. Now, it isn't complicated that people like melted cheese, especially when bacon and potato wedges are concerned. Yet Outback one-ups its take on the junky snack in a few key ways. First, it tosses on cheddar and Monterey Jack in order to keep the taste sharp and the texture gooey. Second, it uses good-sized fries solidly firm with a tender potato filling, which is great for your taste buds, but not so much for your diet. The enormous 2,620 calorie count could be a deterrent if you plan on mixing and matching other side dishes with your main course. When making your own French fries, Kennebec potatoes are an excellent choice to have on hand. Besides achieving a crackly crunch when fried, these potatoes have peels that aren't as tough as russets. This results in a hearty yet airy fry that tastes delicious with the peel left on. The majority of carnivores will find Steak 48 unapproachable, as only six major cities have a location. But when you're in Beverly Hills or Houston, dropping the $100 that's required to even rest your rear in a chair just might be worth it so you can try the fries. Diners give them the thumbs up for the impressive ingredients that bump up the elegance. A trifecta of Parmesan, goat cheese, and coarse sea salt procured from the English town of Malden tops every steaming hot batch, which is, of course, sizzled in truffle oil every time. Built as a northern Italian steakhouse, Davio's exemplifies the region's strong flavors through the lens of an old-school American brasserie. Combining these culinary traditions is what gets you the Parmigiano fries, an incredibly delicious showing capable of giving the spinach alla Romana a run for its money. While the ratio of cheese, salt, and umami aroma may not be everyone's cup of tea, it shines here, and the heaping plateful is more than enough to help you determine whether you're a fan or not. Now, Parmigiano Reggiano and Parmesan are closely linked, with both being robustly flavored hard cheeses rendered from cow's milk. But to actually be considered the real deal in Italy requires the cheese to be manufactured in the regions of Parma and Reggio Emilia. That, in addition to a rich truffle-spiked aioli unveiled at the table, puts Davio's at an advantage for creating a memorable enough side item. The Capitol Grill, with 60-plus locations catering to the classier elements of red meat, manages to create a standout side from a well-tread flavor pairing. Paying customers have nibbled on these mouth-watering Parmesan truffle fries with steaks, hamburgers, and seafood. And regardless of the entree, the savory crunch is consistently on point in all contexts. The basic gist? The fries are cut to regular proportions, cooked in truffle oil, and then sprinkled with just enough grated Parmesan cheese to spike every mouthful with a 
salty kick. They're available on their own or coupled with the Capitol Grill cheeseburger and any other number of delicious sandwiches, and they help elevate those lunchtime staples with some flair. Sometimes a good french fry can be truly outstanding without swimming in buckets of cheese or aioli sauce. Mastro's serves french fries that are worth keeping on your radar for a quality side portion that will enhance the beautifully prepared beef on your plate. As an appetizer, the razor-thin sticks are plentiful, so they're a perfect way to break bread with a large group. Mastro's masters the upscale twist on surf and turf selections, so searching for a proper course to enjoy with this side comes easy. Other offerings, such as the herb-roasted chicken or monstrously proportioned rack of lamb, say, would taste just as splendid as any filet mignon. Another contender to tempt fry connoisseurs offers lounges from coast to coast as well as in Europe and Canada. STK Steakhouse's Parmesan truffle fries might be a bit on the pricey side for some, but unlike other chop house chains charging equally high prices, the preparation here is unique. They're stout and battered, making them mistakable for French toast sticks if you weren't looking carefully. On top of that, STK Steakhouse presents them in a geometric tower that often earns comparisons to a popular, stackable board game. Contrary to the overpowering aromas brought by the garnishes, Nashville scene praises the flavors, finding they complement each other without either end overdoing it. Looking at the menu, we'd say happy hour is the best opportunity for first-timers to grab a taste. In theory, do you want fries with that is an acceptable question for a steakhouse to ask, especially when they're as exceptional as the ones from Ocean Prime. The Parmesan truffle fries consist of the crispiest hand cuts teeming with earthy truffle oil and a webbing of the classic Italian cheese and herbs. Adding them to an order guarantees a hearty dish that'll beef up any of the eatery's various meat cutlets and catches on top of any of the mouth-watering appetizers. Better yet, Select sandwiches like the Maryland Crab Melt allow you to request fries as your included side. Though locations are sparsely scattered across the country, chances are high that trekking to one will be worth the time. The steaks will blow the usual budget chop houses out of the water, and the fish is by far some of the finest. If you ask, those are both excellent excuses to order the fries. The hefty crunch and strong flavors could complement any dish. Spending oodles of cash on a luxurious feast from Charlie Palmer's steak makes spending extra for fries look like a worthy endeavor, doesn't it? The CP Fries, a fitting companion to the signature CP Burger, gets our vote. Many have described the fries as having a perfectly salted and crackly taste that's reminiscent of fast food. Comparisons to the Golden Arches have been drawn, but don't be mistaken, as the gourmet approach casts aside any notion that you could realistically get freshly fried fries of this caliber from a drive through window. Of course, what's a communal pile of fries without some sort of tangy sauce for dunking them? Every order arrives steaming from the fryer and flanked by two different dipping sauces. A spicy chipotle aioli jazzes up a yummy tomato catsup. A few of the menu's entrees also feature fries on the side. They include a crispy falafel pita wrap, a pimento cheeseburger, and, of course, a brasserie-approved steak frites consisting of an incredible New York strip awash in a sumptuous pan sauce. Those in the camp of the skinnier the better when it comes to fries should book a spot at Hillstone Restaurant immediately. Its fries are made out of Kennebec spuds, so you get the golden finish that browns like a dream, and the eatery doesn't cheapen the deal by opting for frozen spears either. Hillstone is sort of unusual as a chain, and that's due to the regional differences between brick and mortars. Outside of Washington, D.C., it's called the Woodmont Grill, while in parts of the East and West Coast, you'll see it's called Houston's. As long as we can snag delectable fries, though, we're frankly unconcerned with the storefront's name. There's a vast array of dishes and cuisines that emphasizes a casual twist on the stuffier sit-down establishment. So pair the fries with whatever your appetite yearns for. Sushi, steak, tuna tartare, the world's your deep-fried oyster. Everyone knows French fries are crispy, golden, and delicious. But did you know they aren't actually French? And moreover, could they be the ticket to helping you get pregnant or stopping you from going bald? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. French fries. It's French, you gotta have French fries. 
It's a common misconception that French fries hail from France, so much so that when France opposed the Iraq War, the U.S. renamed the fast food snack Freedom Fries. French fries originated in modern-day Belgium in the late 1600s. The story goes that French fries were invented in the Meuse Valley after the rivers froze in winter, preventing fishing. The locals cut up potatoes into strips and fried them when they didn't have fish to cook up. It's unclear how French fries got their name. There's one theory that American World War I soldiers dubbed the snack French fries after discovering it in southern Belgium, where the language is predominantly French. This story is unlikely to be correct, however, because as the outlet notes, Thomas Jefferson was apparently already asking for his potatoes to be styled, quote, in the French manner in 1802. In fact, the president is credited with introducing French fries to the United States after serving as the American minister to France from 1785 to 1789. It turns out that ordering deep-fried potatoes cut into strips can be more complicated than we think, particularly if you're traveling abroad. In the UK, French fries refer to McDonald's-style skinny, golden-fried potato sticks, hot chips to their more thickly cut counterparts. The British chips that you would get in an order of fish and chips are more like a steak fry than a standard French fry. In the US, the term French fries refers to a huge range of different styles and shapes of deep-fried potatoes. Aside from the thinly cut french fries that we all know and love, the snack can take the form of ultra skinny shoestring fries, curly fries, waffle fries, and crinkle fries. The British call pre-packaged, thinly sliced potato snacks that line the shelves of most supermarkets crisps. Meanwhile, chips in America are what the British refer to as crisps. While potatoes in their most basic form are certainly vegan, some french fries aren't even vegetarian. It all depends on the preparation method. For example, as taste notes, authentic Belgian french fries are fried in animal fat. While this method isn't all-encompassing, some restaurants do use animal-derived products when cooking french fries. As a matter of fact, most dining establishments use frozen french fries to save on the labor costs associated with prepping the side dish. And while frozen french fries are usually plant-based, some may contain non-vegan ingredients such as milk or animal flavoring. This is why it always pays to check the ingredient list if you are buying frozen french fries at your local grocery store. So, how vegan-friendly are the french fries purchased at fast food restaurants? The answer is, it depends on the chain. When it comes to vegan french fries, your best bet is Burger King, which prepares them in vegetable oil and designated fryers. In-N-Out french fries are also a great vegan option, since they are prepared using 100% sunflower oil. While KFC, Taco Bell, and Wendy's technically offer vegan french fries, the franchises fry them in the same oil as other menu items. This means that diners can expect cross-contamination. Unfortunately, things don't look so vegan-friendly at the world's leading franchise, McDonald's. The chain's fries contain hydrolyzed milk and natural beef flavor, which means that they are not even vegetarian. The art of making french fries that are golden and crispy on the outside and soft and fluffy in the center involves numerous steps. The potatoes all need to be cut into equally sized strips, stored in water to rinse any excess starch, and dried prior to deep frying. They also need to be cooked in oil with a high smoke point, such as canola oil, that won't burn at high temperatures. However, another very important part of the restaurant french fry making process that many of us may not know about is double frying. Deep frying french fries twice ensures that they are crispy on the outside and fully cooked on the inside. To obtain the perfect texture, french fries need to be cooked at a temperature of around 325 degrees Fahrenheit, first to cook the inside of the potatoes. Then, they must be submerged in oil at 375 degrees Fahrenheit to make them crispy on the outside. The fries should rest for at least 15 minutes on a paper-lined surface between the frying sessions. Alternatively, once-fried french fries can also be refrigerated for a period of time before they are popped back into the hot oil. Oh, french fries. God, I love french fries. Of course! Who doesn't love a good french fry? However, if you think that french fries are good for you just because they are made from potatoes, think again. 
While potatoes can be a decent source of fiber, potassium, and vitamins B6 and C, this is only if they are baked and unpeeled. As soon as the skin is peeled, which commonly happens in the case of french fries, potatoes drop some of this nutritional content. Furthermore, the deep frying process used to make french fries increases their calorie content, thus decreasing their nutritional value per calorie. Last but not least, french fries are usually salted, which isn't great considering that many of us already consume more than the recommended amount of sodium per day. Eating french fries on a regular basis has both short and long-term consequences. One of the short-term effects of consuming french fries is stomach problems, since our bodies don't digest fats as fast as they do carbs and proteins. According to the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, a study of 4,500 adults found that those who ate french fries more than two times per week doubled their risk of early death. While the researchers associated this with the oil the potatoes were fried in and not with the vegetable itself, the point is that french fries aren't the healthiest dietary option still stands. While they may look similar, not all potatoes are suitable for making french fries. Without a doubt, the best potato variety for making french fries is russet. Most commonly grown in Idaho, these potatoes contain a high amount of starch and are low in moisture. During the frying process, it's the starch that makes the french fries crispy and the low moisture content that prevents them from becoming hollow. This said, russet, or any other potato type for that matter, should be rinsed off prior to to frying to get rid of any excess starch and prevent the french fries from turning too brown. While russet potatoes are considered the best choice for french fries, they can be substituted by other starchy potato varieties such as King Edward and Yukon Gold. Whatever potato type you decide on, for best results, opt for a firm rather than spongy spud. Stay away from potatoes with dark spots or eyes since this may be an indication they are past their prime. It's best to select large potatoes that are all around the same size, since this makes them easier to slice and will give the fries an appealing shoestring shape. As the birthplace of some of the world's largest fast food franchises, the US is an obvious choice when thinking about french fry consumption. But if you think that Americans are the world's biggest consumers for the fast food staple, you're in for a surprise. As the Wall Street Journal noted, while Americans certainly enjoy a fry or two, it's the Belgians who take the title of the snack's biggest consumers. In 2010, Reuters reported that Belgium sports around 5,000 fry vendors. Belgium is the world's biggest exporter of frozen potato products, including french fries. In fact, each year, the country turns 5.3 million tons of potatoes into frozen goods that are sent all around the world. As such, it's not surprising that the outbreak of COVID-19 had a devastating impact on the industry. As cafes and restaurants closed and exports decreased, Belgium was left with a huge surplus of potatoes. The solution? Industry leaders urged Belgians to eat more french fries. The secretary general of industry group Belgapom, Romain Cools, told Reuters the following in April 2020. We know Belgians like their fries. It's an intangible heritage of our frying culture. So we ask Belgians to consume an extra portion of fries to allow us to process more potatoes and to avoid food waste. It would seem that a study conducted by Channel Mum found that some women believe that eating McDonald's french fries after sex increases the chances of conception. And in particular, it's the snack's high salt content that has been credited with increasing fertility, with some saying that it, quote, prompts the body to soak up extra fluid. If you're looking for any scientific evidence to back up this claim, you may find yourself disappointed. Nevertheless, the founder of Channel Mum, Siobhan Freegard, seems to think that there may be some merit to the claim. Our members swear french fries have all helped, and we have hundreds of bouncing new babies to prove it. Ashley Edwards Walker, who writes for The Bump, agrees, saying the following, I have found a lot of anecdotal accounts from internet IVF moms who tried it and ended up with take-home babies. We think that the strategy is worth a try, and if all else fails, at least you might end up with an after this we are getting french fries t-shirt to show for your efforts. 
Bald men everywhere can rejoice because in 2017, researchers at the Yokohama National University in Japan discovered that dimethyl polysiloxane, say that three times fast, is beneficial to hair regeneration. The substance is found in McDonald's deep frying oil, and researchers used the chemical as an ingredient to help get hair follicle germs ready for transplant. While not actually an ingredient in the potatoes themselves, the McDonald's site explains dimethyl polysiloxane is added to the cooking oil to stop it from foaming. Some publications were quick to capitalize on the research and its alleged connection to McDonald's with misleading headlines stating the following. Chemical in McDonald's fries could cure baldness, study says. However, pump the brakes before you start saying, The babes are back. In reality, there's absolutely no evidence that eating McDonald's french fries is going to give you a fabulous head of hair, or any hair, for that matter. No references were made to any miraculous hair growth at any stage of the research, nor were there any mentions of McDonald's and their infamous french fries. Do you want fries with that? You'd better get yourself to the right fast food restaurant, or your golden fry dream could quickly become a nightmare. Five Guys has earned a reputation for throwing loads of fries into every order. They're not too bad to taste, either. While speaking to Food Republic, Chad Morrell, one of the founder's five sons, said the reason the chain's fries stand out is that they don't just see them as a side dish. He simply said, They're our passion. Five Guys follows a careful formula, including blanching the potatoes and frying them in peanut oil. After cooking the hand-cut fries to golden brown perfection, employees make sure to pack orders with enough to go around. In fact, Five Guys offers so many French fries that you can save money by ordering smaller than you would at other fast food restaurants. One Five Guys employee told Insider that the fries are made for more than one person. He said, Our small fry feeds one to two people, our regular fry feeds two to four people, and our large fry feeds four to six people. So while Five Guys fries are more expensive generally, you can opt for the smaller portion and still have enough to go round. When it comes to sheer quantity of french fries, Smashburger is one of the best fast food restaurants out there. This burger joint offers a few different fry options, including classic crispy french fries, sweet potato fries, and their so-called smash fries. These are similar to the classic crispy fries, but tossed in rosemary, garlic, and olive oil for extra flavor. The fries are cut thin, cooked crispy, and typically filled to the top. One food review Viewer, Dub Zero posted a video to YouTube in which he orders from Smash Burger. Notably, his fries were crispy and filled to the top of the container. He told the camera that he definitely recommended getting the Smash fries instead of regular crispy fries and said, I don't know what they do to them or what they put on them, but they're good. Smash Burger fries are a bit more pricey, but worth it if you want something different than the typical French fry flavor, as well as a bag that's more likely to be full. KFC probably isn't the first fast food joint you think of when it comes to fries, especially since they were only introduced relatively recently. Nevertheless, if you're a fan of KFC's chicken, you'll probably love the fries too, because they use the same seasoning to flavor the spuds. Not everyone was happy to see the chain swap from wedges to fries, of course, but they seem to have been successful for the most part. As far as serving sizes go, KFC is also a great option. The fries are thick cut, so you won't get too many individual pieces, but you should get a decent amount of potato generally. The only problem is pricing. While you get a fair amount of tasty french fries and a large, it will cost you much more than many other fast food chains. Who's got the best darn french fries in the whole wide world? Burger King and I. Although Burger King is well known for popular menu items like the Whopper, Double Whopper, and Bacon Jr., it's less famous for its fries. 
This is likely because BK fries are good, but not great. They aren't too soggy or flimsy, but they also aren't super flavorful. While the fries make a good side to your favorite burger, they aren't much of a standout on their own. A typical medium french fry order comes in at 153 grams, however, which is a decent amount, and you can usually get that for a pretty low price. Perhaps unsurprisingly, many consumers have complained about the quality of Burger King's fries. On Quora, one customer asked, Why can't Burger King seem to get their french fries right? Another user gave their input, saying, Their fries have always been sort of limp, not the best. They're not the least bit crisp on the outside. As it stands, they seem obsessed with creating strange burger toppings and leaving everything else alone, in my perception. They're not my favorite fast food by a long shot. However, some reviewers argue that they enjoy Burger King fries, so it might depend on either personal taste or the store's location. If you're looking for something a little more outside the box, then Arby's is the place to be. The sandwich chain is well known for its flavorful curly fries, and while you might not get as many per container with this order, they often come in long, tasty coils, so you technically get more potato per fry. Arby's has perfected its curly fry over the years to make them fluffy on the inside and crisp on the outside. They're then finished off with a tasty seasoning made with garlic, onion, salt, and a few other spices. Throw in some sauce on the side, and you've got some pretty decent fries. I like ketchup, and I like the horsey sauce as well. When it comes to getting the most fries for your money, one reviewer took the time to weigh the contents of a small, medium, and large curly fry order. They found that a medium order is the best value, coming in at about 148 grams for $2.49. McDonald's is famous for its fries, and for good reason. They are salty, crisp, and fluffy, and the use of one secret ingredient helps give them their iconic taste. As it turns out, McDonald's uses a combination of salt, fat, and sugar as flavoring. You might not expect sugar to be much good for fries, but a small amount can do wonders. Even more importantly, patrons should be able to get a good portion of fries when they order a large from McDonald's. One news channel in the UK tested a couple of McDonald's locations and found they got between 86 and 100 fries in a large order. Considering McDonald's is also hugely affordable, this means you should be getting more bang for your buck. That's all well and good, but recently some customers have been complaining that they received their fry orders half full. On a Quora thread discussing this, one customer wrote, I remember when the surplus fries in the bottom of the bag, because the carton was overflowing, was always the end of takeout treat. Now you think you have another 20% of the fries left to go, and it's suddenly empty. It's entirely possible, of course, that the amount of fries you get from McDonald's may depend on both your location and the time of day. Though Wendy's fries aren't as well-loved as McDonald's, they are the better choice. Or at least that's what Wendy's claims. An ad campaign taken out by the company made the bold claim that people prefer Wendy's fries to McDonald's by a ratio of 2 to 1. When the takeout reached out to Wendy's about this statement, a brand representative told them, The 2 to 1 statistic taste preference is based on a national taste test done by an independent research company. However, not much else was shared about the study, so it's hard to know what some of the other variables may have been. But we do know that, since Wendy's released new hot and crispy fries in 2021, they've become a bigger player in the potato world. Its fries are thicker cut and sturdier than McDonald's, so if you prefer a firm fry, Wendy's may be just what you're looking for. However, as far as getting as many fries as possible, Wendy's isn't the first choice. The thicker cut means fewer fries fit in each carton, and buying a large portion may not give you that much more to work with. One TikTok video shared by an alleged Wendy's employee showed how the same amount of fries could fit in a Wendy's small, medium, and large fry container. Because the containers thin out at the bottom, the large and medium containers still appear relatively full while not holding any more fries than the small container. Clever, yes, but also kinda evil. High five. High five. High five. 
Although Dairy Queen is best known for its soft-serve ice cream, blizzards, and other frozen treats, the chain also offers other standard fast food offerings, such as burgers, chicken, and fries. Dairy Queen provides its medium-cut french fries in kids, regular, and large sizes. But if you want enough to go with an adult meal, you'll likely want to opt for the large. A regular fries order from Dairy Queen comes in at 114 grams, which is less than medium at many other restaurants. The large order should be 186 grams, which is much more reasonable. Unfortunately, Dairy Queen is still far from the first choice for fries. One Redditor, for example, shared their disappointment with their Dairy Queen order. They posted a photo of the small portion of fries they received with their large order and complained they could have gotten more in a McDonald's value meal. Another user commented on the thread, saying that the fries are terrible to begin with but the quality of the fries is apparently up for debate. On another Reddit thread discussing DQ's food, a few users listed the fries as their favorite menu item. Chick-fil-A is a great option for anyone who prefers a less traditional fry, as the chain's waffle fries feature a signature shape that sets them apart from competitors. To make the waffle fries we all know and love, Chick-fil-A pre-cuts them with the skin on before freezing and sending them to stores, where they're fried for two minutes before serving. The large cut fries have a more natural potato flavor than a lot of other options out there. Sadly, you may not get as many individual fries on your order as you might hope. Because of the waffle fries' distinct size and shape, not many waffle fries fit in a single box. If your local Chick-fil-A isn't careful about filling the box to the top, you may only have a few to go with your crispy chicken sandwich. And while a large box could fit plenty of waffle fries, along with some extra to share, they're often underfilled. One Reddit user ordered three portions of large waffle fries and took a photo showing three partially filled containers. Of course, this likely isn't done on purpose. It's more likely a combination of rushed fast food workers and the fact that waffle fries don't fall easily into the container. One commenter on the Reddit thread, who claimed to be a Chick-fil-A employee, said that if you notice your fries are underfilled, they'll typically give you more for free. Let me tell you about Popeye's new Cajun battered fries. They got just a little bit of Popeye's oomph in them. If you're at Popeye's for the classic chicken and want some fries on the side, that's one thing. But if you just want a big helping of delicious, sizzling french fries, you'll want to look elsewhere. One thing the fries do have going for them is flavor. Popeye's offers Cajun fries, which are seasoned with a delicious, lightly spicy blend, although they don't tend to be as crispy as you might hope. Importantly, you also don't get that many fries per order. It is worth noting, however, that the portion size from regular to large is about double, so you should get a lot more in a large order. Some former fans of Popeyes have noticed a quality decrease in the past couple of years. One customer on Quora posed the question of why it seemed the food had gotten worse since COVID-19. A commenter answered, theorizing, I believe it is in how the employees are trained to cook the food. You can have the very same ingredients, but the preparation, presentation, and quality depend on how you were trained to cook the food. Steak and Shake is ideal if you love shoestring fries. Since they're famous for making their fries long and thin to go with the chain's signature milkshakes and burgers, they're good value too, though there are cheaper options out there. And while these skinny fries are excellent for dipping in a milkshake, you'll probably run out before you finish. Because of the slender cut of the fries, you might assume that you get a lot more fries per container at Steak and Shake. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be the case. Steak and Shake has received poor feedback for underfilling their fry containers. With one customer taking photos of their half-filled fries and posting them to TripAdvisor, any restaurant is sure to have the occasional bad review, of course, but this appears to be a pattern with Steak and Shake fries. Other reviews on Reddit contained similar complaints Complaints, with one customer saying their orders from Steak and Shake always skimp on fries, while another wondered how they stay in business at all. 
Washing down the saltiness of an order of warm, crispy french fries with a fizzy diet soda might seriously satisfy your taste buds in the moment, but there might be a major problem with doing so. Enjoying the two together appears to actually lead to legitimate neurological damage that may disrupt the body's natural processes for metabolizing sugar. The combination of french fries and diet soda may sound harmless on paper and taste delicious in your mouth, but a small study run by Yale University-based researcher Dana Small found that ingesting sucralose and carbohydrates at the same time can confuse the brain brain, rendering it ineffective when it comes to telling the body how to properly metabolize sugar and ultimately leading to a host of serious health problems. Wait, sucralose? Yes, that's a common artificial sweetener found in many diet sodas. You may have also seen it under the brand name Splenda. Small likened the effect that artificial sugars like sucralose can have on the brain when consumed alongside carbohydrate-rich foods, such as french fries or pizza, to a circuit change within the cerebrum, as the brain's natural communication systems within the body become damaged. And with no certainty on whether the brain has the capacity to eventually correct itself from this change or not, it is important to know the risks involved when drinking a diet bubbly fountain drink alongside greasy fries. Delicious greasy fries. There are several sacred things in this world that you don't ever mess with. One of them happens to be another man's fries. A serving of diet soda may seem like the health-conscious choice for a consumer looking to lower sugar and calorie intake, as the word diet implies health-conscious ingredients. Not only does sucralose have less calories than regular sugar, it's also sweeter, meaning that, in theory, you can use less of it for the same result. One can of Diet Coke, for example, boasts zero calories and no sugar, compared to regular Coke's 140 calories and 30 grams of sugar. Still, studies suggest that the artificial sweeteners used in diet sodas can do more harm than good. According to the National Library of Medicine, some of the most common artificial sweeteners found in diet sodas are aspartame, cyclamates, saccharin, and sucralose. And every mainstream soda manufacturer, from Coke to Pepsi to Sprite, offers a diet or light variation of their most popular bubbly beverages. As reported by Harvard Health, one study found that drinking diet soda daily can increase the consumer's risk of developing type 2 diabetes by 67%. The same study also found a 36% higher chance of developing a metabolic disorder and an increased chance of weight gain, which seems like the opposite outcome diet soda drinkers are likely hoping for. According to Healthline, individuals who ingest diet sodas are also subject to increased risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, and kidney disease. Not exactly what we think of when we think healthy. In addition to the health risks posed by the artificial sugars found in diet soda, it is important to consider what happens when carbs are consumed alone. Two processes happen within the body when carbohydrates are ingested. First, blood sugar and insulin levels go up. Then the insulin transports the excess glucose into your body cells to be used as fuel, which in turn brings blood sugar levels back down to normal. When you introduce sucralose to the mix, however, the combination of the two substances causes the brain to change how the body interacts with the insulin responsible for lowering glucose levels. The cells can become resistant to insulin, and with it still having an overflow of glucose that has nowhere to go, the brain can trigger the body into producing more insulin in an attempt to return to blood sugar balance. When this process is continuously repeated, it puts the body at a higher risk for developing type 2 diabetes, as well as accelerates weight gain. To avoid the health risks that come with consuming carbohydrates and diet soda simultaneously, Health Digest says it is best to drink the diet soda by itself and limit carb intake to one hour before you gulp down the artificially sweetened beverage and one hour after. This gives the body enough time to process the sucralose without affecting how it interacts with the brain during a carb-induced rise in blood sugar. Parmesan truffle, sweet potato, and animal style. Fries come in all shapes and sizes. But which chain restaurants have actually stuck to the never-frozen philosophy? In-N-Out is very proud of the fact that the chain has no need for freezers or microwaves. It's not just the USDA ground chuck patties that are served fresh. The fries are, too. The chain's French fries are made from scratch at its numerous locations across the U.S. The potatoes are hand-cut in-house and fried in 100% sunflower oil. With so much effort put into the humble french fry, it's sad to see that it isn't exactly paying off. In fact, most fast food enthusiasts seem critical of In-N-Out fries. Conceding that the restaurant's french fries are fresh, food columnist Lucas Peterson notes that they are also bland, crumbly little matchsticks that aren't approved by any amount of ketchup, salt, cheese, or salad dressing you want to add to them. Community reviewers seem to agree. And multiple Quora patrons have debated why the fries are not up to par compared with the competition, ultimately explaining it by the fact that In-N-Out doesn't fry the potatoes twice. There are a few ways to improve upon the standard fries, though. You can always order them well done if you want more of that desired crisp. 
And of course, you can always try the chain's animal-style fries. The secret menu item comes loaded with melted cheese, grilled onions, and a secret spread. Founded in 1986, Five Guys currently operates 1,500 locations around the globe. And there's a good reason why the franchise has grown. It's delicious burgers, hot dogs, and sides. When it comes to french fries, the chain offers classic Five Guys-style fries and Cajun-style fries. Both are made from freshly cut potatoes that are fried twice in cholesterol-free 100% peanut oil. While most fast food lovers view french fries as a mere side dish, this isn't the approach taken by the family behind Five Guys. Chad Morrell, one of the sons of the chain's founder Jerry Morrell, explains, "...they are the hardest thing we have to do, but people think that it's the easiest. If you don't do them right, they're still kinda good and people don't complain, but that doesn't cut it with us." So what's the lowdown? Five Guys sources its russet Burbank potatoes from Idaho for 10 months each year. When these get too soft for frying, the restaurant replaces them with spuds from Washington or Oregon. Once in the kitchen, the potatoes are sliced, rinsed, and soaked to eliminate excess starch. Then they're pre-cooked for around two and a half minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, left out to cool for at least 10 minutes, and fried again. For Muya, fries are a serious business. The chain offers regular hand-cut Idaho French fries and sweet potato fries. It also prides itself on its 24-hour, six-step, fatiguing fry frenzy. More specifically, the restaurant's fry-making process involves washing, cutting, rinsing, agitating, and double frying in canola oil. The effort Muya is putting into its fries seems to be paying off. Nancy Nichols from DM Magazine writes that despite the fact that the Muya burger she sampled was delicious, it wasn't mouthwatering enough to make her repeat the experience. However, this wasn't the case for the french fries. Nichols describes, "...I found a slight crunch with every bite and a soft, hot center. At the bottom of the cup, I found a treasure trove of salty, crunchy nubs." While Wingstop is generally known for its flavored chicken wings, the chain also has plenty to offer in the french fries department. In fact, the restaurant's menu features four different takes on the ubiquitous side dish, all made with fresh-cut Idaho potatoes. While the seasoned fries are a Wingstop staple, you can also pick from cheese fries, buffalo ranch fries, and Louisiana voodoo fries topped with cheese sauce, ranch sauce, and Cajun seasoning. According to Don Odiorn, the vice president of food service at the Idaho Potato Commission, Wingstop consulted the organization about perfecting its fries. Odiorn shared, "...we had potato expert Greg Shannon, a consultant who used to do training seminars for Simplot, visit the chain on multiple occasions, and he developed a set of specs for the fryer equipment, the potato variety to use, storage requirements, and preparation. Wingstop's passion and commitment certainly show in the final product. One TripAdvisor reviewer praises the chain's fries, saying, "...I love hand-cut fries. My whole family does. We hate the pre-cut, pre-cooked frozen fries. Wingstop has the best." You get a huge portion, the best fries around, hot right out of the fryer. We make it our way, and in doing so, make it irresistible. Wingstop. With nine locations in Ohio, Melbar and Grilled is a regional grilled cheese chain that specializes in craft beer and classic American comfort food all dressed up. More specifically, the venue serves gourmet sandwiches with various types of cheese and other favorites, such as pulled beef brisket, homemade meatballs, and smoked turkey. The chain's selection of French fries is nothing to sneeze at either, and includes cheese bacon fries, chili cheese fries, cheese gravy fries, and garlic romano fries. The star of the menu, however, is the hangover fries with pulled pork, gravy, mozzarella cheese, fried sunny-side-up egg, and scallions. So what's the verdict? Reviewers rave about the melt bar and grilled fries, with one satisfied patron saying, "...fries are my obsession. These fries were perfectly salted and very filling. No ketchup was required because they were that good." Another reviewer recommends the chain's hangover fries, adding that they are a, quote, "...meal within themselves and to die for." 
The folks from BurgerFi proclaim in a post on the restaurant's Facebook page, we don't just tear open a bag of frozen fries and call it a day like those other guys. Instead, the burger joint's fries are made from russet potatoes, which are sliced, blanched, double fried for added crunch, and seasoned on the premise. Burger Fi's fries seem to be a hit with community reviewers. One patron calls them, "...the best french fries ever. The burgers are great and the beer and tea are very good, but the fries are to die for. They are crunchy and not greasy at all like at Five Guys." Another fry connoisseur says, "...they were served sizzling hot and crispy. They were perfection, and the portion was a pretty good size." Rachel Askinasi, who reviewed Burger Fi for Insider, says that the fries arrived at her table salted and hot. She comments, "...the potatoes were cut to around one-half inch thick, varied in length, and some had brown potato skin on the outside, which I personally love. They were soft inside and had a semi-crunchy exterior." On the downside, Askinasi also writes that the fries didn't retain their flavor, turning cold and stiff within 30 minutes. Come in! Come in! Mayday! I'm losing your transmission! I said French fries! Boasting six locations around Atlanta and Athens, the Varsity specializes in hot dogs and burgers. And we all know that nothing takes these fast food staples to the next level like a batch of crispy, mouth-watering fries. Going back to basics, the Varsity serves its hand-cut Idaho potatoes fried in canola oil and salted. So how do the Varsity French fries measure up? Unfortunately, the community consensus probably isn't what the chain's founders envisaged when they first launched the fast food joint way back in 1928. One TripAdvisor reviewer said, never again. They also added that the restaurant's French fries were undercooked. Another fast food enthusiast called them the worst French fries in the world. The side dish has also been described as limp and lifeless, dried and overcooked looking, and greasy. You get the drift. Hubcap Grill is a regional chain with just three outlets, so you may be forgiven for not having had the opportunity to sample its menu. Nevertheless, the burger joint does make its fries from freshly cut potatoes, so we felt that we had to give it a spot on our list. While there's little information out there about the restaurant's fry preparation process, there's little doubt that it offers imaginative variations of the popular side dish. Some of the options on the Hubcap Grill menu include buffalo fries smothered in blue cheese and wing sauce, or country fries with cream gravy and bacon bits. For more adventurous diners, there are the Hell Fries with cayenne and chili powder, sriracha mayo sauce, and jalapenos, as well as the affectionately named Stinky Fries with a splash of malt vinegar and garlic salt. The reception to the Hubcap Grill French fries has been lukewarm, suggesting that while they aren't bad, they aren't showstoppers either. Although the fries are repeatedly described as good, they mostly seem overshadowed by other Hubcap Grill menu items. That being said, one reviewer says that they love the chain's Hell Fries, adding that they are very spicy. With 10 locations across the Houston area and one in Dallas, Bex Prime is a regional chain that serves a huge range of dishes, from burgers and hot dogs to fresh salads. With a motto like, our only freezer is for the beer mugs, there is little doubt that all of the chain's offerings are made from fresh produce. And the restaurant's french fries are no exception. Hand cut from Idaho potatoes, the chain's french fries come with optional melted cheddar or chili. Bex Prime also serves Parmesan truffle fries and sweet potato fries, although it's unclear if these also arrive at the restaurant fresh. The Leader News reviewed Bex Prime and seemed particularly impressed with the franchise's Parmesan truffle fries, saying, "...the Parmesan had some extra zing and zeal to it, so much so that I found I had eaten them all before I had so much as glanced at the ketchup bottle on the table." The fries themselves weren't overly dry or oily and had a slightly crunchy texture. A Yelp reviewer echoes this sentiment, saying, "...the fries were also excellent with the right balance of Parmesan and truffle flavor." Ding fries it done, ding fries it done, ding fries it done, ding fries it done. When it comes to fries, Hopdotty offers some interesting choices, including hand-cut barbecue ranch fries, buffalo fries, Parmesan truffle fries, green chili queso fries, and nacho fries loaded with cheese, pico de gallo, avocado, and sour cream. 
There are also two types of sweet potato fries, including hot honey and sage, but the menu doesn't specify if these are also made from fresh potatoes. While we didn't find a lot of information about the restaurant's fry preparation process, it's likely that it involves frying sliced Kennebec potatoes and Melfry oil. The community seems happy with the hop dotty fries. One French fry enthusiast says, Never have enjoyed French fries like I did here. Never ate so many fries as I did here. Patrons seem particularly impressed with the restaurant's Parmesan truffle fries, with one reviewer simply exclaiming, get them, and another highlighting that they are the real star of the show. One happy patron elaborates, Perfect for sharing, or not, lol. Our waiter Michael gave us an awesome tip to try it with a side of chili green queso. Trust me, your life will change, and your taste buds will be taken out of this world. With nine locations in the Washington area, it's only fitting that Dick's Drive-In's french fries are made from Washington potatoes. Hand-cut daily on premises, the fries are fried in high oleic sunflower oil. With so much thought and preparation, it's unfortunate that customers seem to find the accompaniment underwhelming. Daryl, who reviewed the chain for Soda Fry, says that while the fries tasted alright, they were overly greasy. He explains, They cut and soak the potatoes to remove some of the starch, but from what I can tell, they don't double drop the fries. Without that step, it's almost impossible to obtain a crispy exterior. It also causes the fries to soak up the cooking grease. Sarah Jackson reviewed the chain for Business Insider with similar results, the caveat here being that for some reason she only tried the food 30 minutes after purchasing it. She writes, The fries lost all semblance of crispiness and became soggy from the condensation in the bag. They were cold but tasted decent. The burger chain's very specific potato choice landed it in hot water at the end of 2022 due to the state's potato shortage. After the restaurant replaced its buds with other potato varieties, some patrons noticed the difference. Recognizing the problem, Dick's Drive-In's representatives even tweeted, Thank you for your patience as we make it through this week, and if you get a fry that isn't satisfying, please bring it back for a replacement. 